Feel the moonshine, and ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? Yes, I'm going to Carolina in my mind. Hi, everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today, I'm going to show you how I take a song that was meant for guitar and specifically finger picking guitar and kind of convert it or adapt it for piano. I'm going to be using James Taylor's Carolina in my mind. I've kept the song in the original key of E major, even though it doesn't sound great for my voice, but it will help you to be able to listen to the recording in the end and actually play along with it. Now the times that I play in this style are mostly when I'm taking requests from people, which I do a lot, because a lot of times people want to hear songs that were actually meant for the guitar. James Taylor, the Eagles, John Mayer, any kind of singer-songwriter. It's just a popular style and it can be very difficult to recreate songs and make them sound any good unless you kind of have a grasp on how to convert it. thing I'm doing. That was actually a John Mayer song called uh, Who Says I Can't Get Stoned? But that kind of a style where your left hand plays half notes and your right hand arpeggiates the chords in different inversions that are close to each other. That kind of style, that's what I'm talking about. And I've actually made a PDF for this lesson, so I've written out every single note of every single chord that you could play to accompany somebody on Carolina In My Mind. Not only in this video will you learn how to accompany someone on this particular song, but I'm hoping that you'll take the concept and apply it to other songs because you'll totally be able to do that using, like I just said, the half notes with the left hand, the arpeggios with the right hand. I'm hoping you'll be able to just apply the concept all across the board so that whenever you look up tablatures for songs on the internet, you will just be able to bust out this kind of thing. All right, let's take a look and see how it's done. When I teach a concept, I like it not only to apply to the song that we're talking about, but also to any song. So I'd like to show you just the basic method of this kind of thing. Let's go ahead and start in the key of F, just to make it a little bit more simple. All you have to do is put your left pinky on the root, and then your third finger on the third of, you know, whatever chord we're talking about. And then you're going to put your right hand, instead of being on an F chord, you're going to play it in its second inversion, which means to take this C and put it on the bottom. So for this method, you're gonna, you're gonna have the root, you're gonna have the third, and then you're gonna have your hand in second inversion. And the way you do it is your left hand just goes like this. And your right hand goes. And they fit together like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. You see that? So it takes, it's eight notes in every bar. One and two and three and four and, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's the basic, basic pattern of what we'll be doing. And, and then from there, you can take other little patterns using the same idea, almost all the time with half notes in the left hand. Sometimes it might be reaching up to the fifth, but always filling up the space with, with eight notes. Sometimes you can, you can do like that kind of a thing where you break up the chord in a different way. We need to add some variety because if we only did this, it would get boring. But when we start on the James Taylor song, we actually do this, but in a few keys. We've got one bar of E major. So we do the exact same thing. We put this B on the bottom of the E chord. Right, so same thing. But right here we're gonna change to an A chord. 
The way we do it, we're gonna set up our left hand to have our pinky on the root of A, and then we're gonna take an A chord, we're gonna put the E on the bottom, and then we're set to do it again. But it only lasts for half a bar, so that's all we get to play. Then, we've got a descending kind of harmony. So we've got a G sharp that happens with an E chord on top of it. So what we gotta do is we, we definitely have to nail that G sharp in the bass, but we gotta move the closest way we can move to get from this A chord to an E chord. So the thing to ask yourself is, do I have any of those notes already? So I've got these notes for an A chord. Are any of them notes that I'll need for the E major chord? This one is, right? I've already got that. And how close is the third? Well, it's right there. And how close is the fifth? Well, it's right there. So we're gonna move from here to here. That's the quickest way. So we cover the bass note and we play the chord. Now, if you can find tablatures for any guitar song that, that has finger picking like this, you can start to put this kind of a thing together. You start with the root, you put your chord in second inversion, and you're, you're really set to go. Okay, so let's keep going from there. We've got F sharp minor now. Easy way to move to F sharp minor would probably be here, actually, to just, to just go up the whole step, except if you can do it, it's better to put it in second inversion. So it's not that far to put it in second inversion. And then you have the same pattern. And then, I, and then I take a rest. Sometimes you can take a rest and that's okay. So on the B chord, I'm just giving you the root and the third. So this sounds like, In my mind I'm born to Carolina. Like that. Then we go back to F minor and we're gonna do the exact same thing we just did. Now we're going to B. So the, the easiest way to move to B would be right here. But you should always try, you should try it. And, and you notice that, that these fingers will kind of run into each other. If you do use that easiest way and you're, and you're here on the first inversion of B major instead of the second inversion, which is what we've been talking about. If you do hop up to the second inversion, your fingers won't hit each other when you, when you play the first and the third with your left hand. So see how it sounds. If it doesn't sound like too big of a jump from the F minor in, in second inversion to the B in second inversion, go ahead and do it. And, and I've made the decision to do that here, just, just to employ this method as much as I can for you. I think it sounds nice. And then we're back, and then we're back. And then here we've got a descending harmony. So we've got two beats per chord. You can also see that I chose to notate this song in the meter of 2-2, two, two, which means that there are two beats per bar and the note type that gets the beat is a half note. So there'll be two half notes in every bar and it's, it's much like 4-4, four, four, except that there are only two big beats for every measure. I mean, you, it, the reason I did this was to avoid having to write so many 16th notes. We could have done it like 1-E e and a 2-E e and a 3-E e and a 4-E e and a, and that's one bar. But to me, that just looks a little messy, so I put it in 2-2. Two, two. And, and now we just have half notes with the left hand and eighth notes with the right hand almost all of the time. Okay, so in this descending part, we've got left hand. The left hand is just going to be playing roots. And I would recommend um, what, starting on your thumb, going to your third finger, reaching under with your thumb for the B so that you have room to do everything, like that. Then with your right, all I did was just, I, I decided that I don't need to hop up the second inversion this time for this E chord because it only lasts for half a bar, just, just for one big beat, you know, one, and then it changes to so why not just play the chord in as closed of a position as I can? Like, I need four notes to fill up the eighth notes in the space of half of a bar. Why not just put them to cl as close together as I can? That's, th that's kind of my thinking in the next few bars. So here we go, we go to a B chord with a D sharp on the bottom. And the, e, the closest way to do that is to go third, fifth, root, third, root, flat, third, fifth, root, and then an E chord with a B on the bottom. Same thing all the way down. And then a tiny rest. And then we're back like we were with, with the root, and then we're in second inversion. 
Same thing here, root, second inversion, root, second inversion. And then I like to give you just a taste of what James Taylor actually plays on his guitar all the time, which is this kind of a line. This is called an E add two, or some people might call it an E two. I've also heard people call it rock and roll E, I think. But what it basically means is that you've got the notes of an E major chord, but you add the second degree. You might ask why we don't call it an E nine, because this is the nine. That's because we don't have the seven. Anytime we've got the seven and we, and we add this note, we would call it a nine because we've also got the seven. But when we don't, we can call it a two. And it's a really easy kind of thing to play on the guitar. It just lines up so nicely to be able to play the, the add two chords in, in a lot of instances. And on the piano, it's not very much harder. When you do it, if you want it to sound more like a guitar, you can kind of hold on to the other notes instead of going. I didn't exactly write it in this case, um, just to you know to not make it look too messy. But if you want to hold on to these other chord tones, you'll have more of an authentic kind of guitar sound. Kind of like the the other the other strings are still ringing, you know. All right, so we get. And I did that at the beginning, too, on the intro. On the intro, I just kind of tried to copy how it sounds when James Taylor plays the intro. That's all I did. And that takes some practice. But it's the same kind of idea with half notes in the left hand. So, you know, don't worry so much about, about maybe you can't come up with this kind of a thing yet. The more that you mess around with this kind of style, I think the more it'll just kind of come out in your playing a little bit. Now this song is kind of unique in its form in that it starts with an intro and then it goes right into the chorus. And after the chorus, it does the verse, but two times. So now we're at the point where we're at a verse. And there is no guitar picking over this verse. They're just kind of chords. <laughs> It just kind of sounds like that. And I wanted to show you some different ways that you can break up the monotony of only just playing chords. So, so what I've done is, again, I've, I've put us in second inversion, so there's an E chord. But this time, we play quarter notes. We break it up more slowly, and, and we, we arpeggiate. So that means to take notes from the chord and to put them in a different order. And you can put them in any order you want, really. But here, I've kind of chosen to go top, bottom, middle, top. And we do the exact same thing in D. And I like the octaves here. It just gives a little bit more of a foundation. I end up on a B chord. And, and I've just given you the root and the third and the fifth. And then we switch to a C diminished chord, which technically should be notated as a C and an E flat and a G flat, but just for reading sake, I've kept it as a D sharp and an F sharp so that you can see that it's the same chord from B to C. Fingering should probably be like this, all ones and fives. And then I might go three, two with the left hand. And then we're going to do the same kind of thing on a C minor chord, but this time I've chosen to do it in root position. Again, top, bottom, middle, bottom. And then I reached for the closest A inversion I could, which actually ends up in first inversion with the C sharp on the bottom. Now, another rule when you're kind of choosing where to, you know, which inversion to use, it can be that I think the piano sounds really nice and simple if your right hand stays in the middle of the piano, like somewhere just right in here. So I kind of did that at this point. Whisper something soft and kind. This is another instance where there's like a, um, it's almost like a B add to, but I called it a B sus because it has, it has this suspended sound, which means that you hear the fourth. So this is also something that guitar players do a lot. And so I just kind of wrote it out. And again, I'm just trying to copy how James Taylor sounded. More of the same. And then a couple of chords. I'm 
This is pretty classic. You should probably practice this in like every key if, if you want to play this kind of stuff often. And I did write it this time. You can hold your B down and it'll sound more like a guitar. Then uh, the song goes back and it does the chorus, but then it skips after the chorus and goes to the bridge, which I've called the coda. Uh, the part that goes with a holy host of others, that part. We start on the four chord, which is A, and at this point, I wanted to do something different. So I could have done the same kind of thing again. I could have, um, you know, put, put the root here and the third in my left hand and put this in second inversion. We could have done this. We could have done that, but we've already done it. So I, I wanted to teach you something new. So another way is that you can, you can spread your hand out over the chord plus the octave. If you start on the third, you can do a really nice arpeggiation that goes. Kind of reminds me of uh, the music box dancer, right? Yeah, kind of a little bit. Uh, so we can do that here, and we can also just give half notes again with our left hand, and this time we're doing it in an octave. I got a little bit creative here, just for fun. All I did was make it a, a C minor 9 chord just for fun, because you can add ornamentation anytime you want to, especially, especially at the end of a four bar phrase or an eight bar phrase. And then we just kind of keep it up. Still I'm on the dark side of the wall. And here again is an A2. This is a different way to break it up, a little more um, variety right here. You can go, you can put that add two right here at the top part of your hand, right against the three, so that you have these two nice dissonances, and you can make it top, bottom, middle, other middle, right? So, that sounds really nice, I think. And then, So when we broke up the D chord like this, we got it in second inversion, right? But when we broke up the A chord, all I did, I just keep our thumb kind of grounded here and we put the A chord in its root position. And again, the more notes you want to hold on to in a situation like this, I think the better. But only if they're chord tones. You, you must forgive me some basic chords if I'm a band and then we're back like we were at the beginning Going to Carolina in my here I've added a little more color so we've got a B sus 9 sound my my one thing is this song is not in a good key for me. It's like, it's, this is totally the man key. So I kept it here because I do know that about 90% of my viewers are male. Welcome men. Come on, ladies, where are you at? But anyway, I've kept it in James Taylor's key just, you know, to make it easy like that. But I know that I don't sound great singing in this key. So then we're going to hop back to the sign and play the chorus again in my mind. Right, all the way until ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me. He changes the melody a little bit here. To hit me from behind, yes I'm. And then I've said on the last time we're gonna go to the second coda. So the second coda, the second coda is on the last page of the PDF. Going to Carolina. It's the same kind of thing we've already done. But here I make it an F sharp minor seven chord. In my, we've got a B sus, which isn't quite as holy as a G sus, but it's still a great chord. And then it resolves in my mind. And then same kind of thing that we did before, where the left hand descends and we use the very closest places we can to put the right hand. And then this just kind of repeats. I'm going to Carolina in my mind. I'm going to Carolina in my mind. And then you can just kind of end on an E chord if you want. But 
I've got it written to um, repeat and fade. Well, it's always difficult to do that in a live situation. But you can repeat it as many times as you want. You, you know, you throw a, a bust out your best scat solo or something if you're feeling feisty. <laughs> faked you out okay that's how you do a fade out everybody <laughs> but yeah you can just you can just you can make a little retardando and then just end with a really simple e chord maybe like that now i know i haven't made a video like this in a very long time like a video where i show you the way to play a song there's a good reason for it it's because i think that some of you get a little bit tied down to the exactness and you want me to show you every single note and you, and this time I, I did make sure to go through the entire song with my hands being shown and to show you every single bar because I know that sometimes in the past I've concentrated more on the concept than on the actual performance of the song and that has angered some of you but I'd like you to try to apply this concept especially you know the part where you play the root and then the third with your left hand and then put put it in put the chord in second inversion in your right hand i'd like you to show me how you do this maybe you can tag me on instagram amy nolte music and show me other instances where you're putting this guitar finger picking style into practice on your keyboard at home because that's the most important thing. You can take all kinds of songs and apply this practice. If you haven't seen it already, it might be smart of you to watch the first three videos in my How to Play Rock Piano series, because I, if, if, if you found that this is just a little bit too advanced for you, in those videos, I talk more about first, you know, playing chords in root positions and also playing chords in their inversions and start just the startings of arpeggiating chords and making grooves with your hands. That's what we're all about. I mean, especially when you're accompanying somebody, you want to make a groove so that they've got something nice and tight to sit on while they sing or play, whoever you're accompanying. And I hope you're accompanying yourself. Even if you don't think you sound very good singing this tune, sing it anyway. It feels good to sing and play. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching Amy Nolte Music. I'll see you next time.